May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord. Lord, the sermon text that John had selected is from the epistle reading. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body. For we all partake partake of the one bread. Well, today we're in the fifth day of the Passion Week. And tonight we celebrate Monday Thursday, sometimes called Holy Thursday. But Monday in generally refers to the term of washing, the washing of the disciples' feet by Jesus. And he performed that during the Passover meal. As part of that, he gave them a new command. And as John records in his gospel, Jesus said, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And while we are called to love one another and to serve one another, let us focus on the other gift that his disciples and the church received at that Passover meal. On that evening, the gift of Holy Communion. Praised be to you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with your commandments and enjoined upon us the mitzvah of kindling the festival of lights. For centuries, Jewish women have ushered in the festival of Passover with those very words. The candles are lit, the prayer is said, and Jewish people all over the world begin the ceremony commanded by God himself as written in the book of Exodus. You shall tell your son on that day, it is because of what the Lord did for for me when I came out of Egypt. We are indebted to Steve Herzig, who is a Jewish Christian, and a book he wrote called Jewish Culture and Customs that helps us understand all of the pieces of Passover and how that relates to our Monday Thursday, Holy Communion. Of all the feast days God gave Israel over the centuries, the feast of the Passover is one of the most important. It reminds the Jewish people of the last meal that was eaten while they were in bondage in Egypt and their journey to the promised land. It is also a reminder of the redemption they received when the angel of death passed over the homes whose lintels were marked with the blood of a lamb. In preparation for Passover, Jewish people for millennia have been cleaning their entire houses in obedience to the command found in Exodus 3 or 13:7. No leavened bread shall be seen with you and no leaven shall be seen in you in all your territory. It is taken so far that to further ensure the absence of any trace of leaven, special dishes are used, as well as special pots and pans to prepare the food, none of which have had any leaven in them. It is believed that leaven symbolizes evil and must be dealt with. Exodus 12 tells of the Passover story. And during this celebration, each person in the family has a role to play. 
The Passover meal, called the Seder, is a Hebrew word meaning order. This order has remained relatively unchanged for the last 2,000 years. The Haggadah, which is a book of songs, prayers, and readings, tells the participants what to do and when to do it. The head of the family, traditionally a father or grandfather, sits at the head of the table and directs all of the events of the ceremony. And the Seder begins with the women of the household lighting the Passover candles. The light of the candles symbolizes the lighting of the spirits of the family for the celebration. This is followed by the Kaddish, or the blessing of the wine. The cup represents the first of the four I wills spoken by God in Exodus 6. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Now that wine that they use, it must be red wine to remind the participants of the blood of the lamb. And next comes the yush, the washing of the hands. Washing is and always has been a very important part of religious functions with the Jewish people. Not only does it purify, but it also reminds us of the priests as they prepared themselves for service in the temple. And then comes karpas, the green vegetables. The participants then take parsley or any green ve vegetable and dip it in a bowl of salt water. These two elements speak of, the sp of springtime, the creation's renewal, and of the tears that were shed during the 400 years that Israel spent in bondage in, in Egypt. The parsley is also symbolic of the hyssop that was used to apply the lamb's blood to the lintels of the doors. Yasha is the term for the breaking of the middle matzo. During the ceremony, a pouch containing three matzos is taken by the leader. The three matzos represent the three classifications of the Jewish people. The Kohen, the priestly class, the Levites, the servants in the temple, and the rest of Israel. And the rabbi says that the three matzos together represent strength in unity. But that middle matzo is taken out and broken by the leader and then wrapped in white cloth and hidden away. The part that is hidden is called afkomen, or the bread of affliction. And then next in the ceremony comes the four questions. The youngest member of the family has an important assignment of asking the leader about Passover and the Seder. He wants to know why this night is different from all other nights. So he asks, On all other nights we eat leaven. Why on this night only unleavened bread? On all other nights, we eat all kinds of herbs. Why on this night, only bitter herbs? On all other nights, we don't dip even once. Why on this night do we dip twice? On all other nights, we eat sitting or reclining. Why on this night do we eat reclining? The leader answers these questions by telling the story of the Jewish people up to the time when Moses received the law at Mount Sinai. At this point, the second cup of wine is poured. Each participant in the Seder table sit, dips his little finger in the wine 
and recites one by one the ten plagues as he puts the drop of wine on his own plate. In doing so, the Jewish people remember the suffering, even the suffering of their enemies. A prayer for the wine is recited, and a second cup is taken. This is the second, I will. I will deliver you from slavery of the, to them. Then comes Pesah, the Paschal or Passover lamb. Today there's no lamb in the ceremony in that Passover service. Instead, they have a shank bone of a lamb that serves as a reminder of the lambs that were sacrificed yearly before the temple was destroyed in AD 70. Next, there's the hazret, the bitter herbs, and haroset, the sweet mixture of apples, nuts, and cinnamon. These are eaten together after the hands have been washed a second time. The bitterness of the herbs recalls the bitter bondage of the Jewish people. The sweetness of the haroset reminds them of the sweetness of freedom. Together, a bittersweet remembrance. It is then customary to eat the Hillel sandwich. That's named after a great Jewish um, scholar named Hillel. It's horseradish, the bitter herbs, and it is put between two pieces of matzo. In Hillel's day, a piece of lamb was also part of that sandwich. And Hillel taught that the three biblical elements, the bitter herbs, the matzo, and the lamb, should together be remembered. And after all of this, the dinner is finally served. And an amazing and wonderful meal it is. Prior to the destruction of the temple, in AD 70, lamb would have been served. But today, however, traditional meal includes fish and chicken or roast beef and kugel. Many desserts unique to the Passover are also served, such as cakes and brownies or pastries baked with potato flour and thus unleavened. And after this festive meal, the children search for the afkomen that's hidden earlier in the ceremony. And whoever finds it receives a special prize. Rabbis say that the afkomen is important because the Seder cannot end until each participant has eaten a small piece of it. In so doing, they are remembering the lamb. Some rabbis believe that symbolically, the afkumen is more important than that lamb shank bone. And then there is the third cup of wine. The third I will. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. Following this third cup of wine, Elijah the prophet is invited to come to the Seder. A place is always reserved at the table for Elijah with a full glass of wine. And then the fourth cup of wine is taken. This is the last of the four I wills. I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God. In closing, everyone sings the hollow psalms, Psalms 113 through 118. A prayer is recited, and then all say a hearty next year in Jerusalem. So what does all of this say to us tonight? Well, the feast of the Passover is celebrated by Jesus and his disciples on that night. 
he had, he had done that very same ceremony for the 30 years of his life. But as we know, it was the Passover that Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, the sacrament of Holy Communion. And if we look closer, we see that the rich symbolism of the Seder service paints a very clear and revealing picture of Jesus as that promised Messiah and Savior, helping us to be better or to do better or better understand this holiday. So before the Passover begins, there is a thorough search for the leaven. The leaven is then to be removed from the house. In, Judea, in Judaism, the symbol this symbolizes evil. When we Christians remember the Lord in the sacrament of Holy Communion, we also search our hearts to find any sin and get rid of it by confessing it to God. In Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, we hear the familiar verse, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in any unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. We heard in the beginning of the Passover, the celebration, the women bring, bring out that light to the Passover table. Without, without them, the story of the physical redemption of the Jewish people could not be told. Well, 2,000 years ago, there was a Jewish girl named Mary who was the choice vessel of God to bring spiritual redemption to the world. Without her, the story of eternal salvation could not be told. The three original elements of the Passover, the bitter herbs, the unleavened bread, and the lamb, the bitter herbs speak of Israel's bitter, bitter bondage. But we as Christians, believers, are to, have a perf are to have a period of reflection in communion and realize the bitter bondage of sin. And the only cure for that bondage is the Lamb, Jesus Christ. He was pure, sinless, without spot or blemish, just like the unleavened bread. And finally, a great drama takes place with the afkumen. Three matzos are placed in one pouch. The middle one is taken, broken, and wrapped in white, hidden away, found, redeemed, and shared by all. Because the destruction of the temple we heard that that middle matzo has taken the place of the lamb in its importance, as shown by the fact that everyone at the table must partake it. When Christians remember Jesus at communion, they remember that he, the second person of the Godhead, was taken, broken, then killed, hidden away in a tomb, and then raised from the dead. Christians remember his passion, death and resurrection by each taking a little piece of unleavened bread and eating it. Interestingly, the word akoman is the only Greek word used in the whole Seder. And it means he came for us and for Jewish Christians. The Afkuman looks back, not at the Passover lamb bringing physical salvation in Egypt, but at the Savior, the Passover lamb 
who brought spiritual salvation to the world. Isaiah described this event when he said, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. Isaiah also said, Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter. And John the Baptist said of him, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Jewish people believe that, I, that Elijah will announce the Messiah. Each year they set a place for him at the table, waiting and hoping for that announcement. And 2,000 years ago, the Gospel of Matthew recounts that Jesus said of John the Baptist, he is Elijah who is to come. So in in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus instituted this holy communion. He took the unleavened bread representing his pure and spotless body And he took the cup, representing his precious blood. This cup that he took was the third cup in the Passover. The cup of redemption. And he said that he would not drink the fourth cup until he drinks it anew with us in his Father's kingdom. Remember that last I will? that went with that fourth cup, I will take you to be my people and I will be your God. We will enjoy this fourth cup with him in his Father's kingdom in heaven. And lastly, the Gospels speak of hymns and the disciples singing. And we know the hymns that they sang because they still sing them at the Passover ceremony. The hollow hymns, Psalms 113 through 118. Remember, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord made Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. On the night Jesus celebrated the Passover and on the second, he became the perfect Passover lamb without spot or blemish on behalf of each of us. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And then Christ, our Passover lamb, was sacrificed. So in the lesson tonight, it's actually pretty simple. Jewish or Gentile, young or old, rich or poor, on that night in Egypt, the only issue was whether or not the blood was on the doorpost. Sincerity did not count. Good deeds did not count. Degrees and pedigrees did not count. If the blood of the Lamb was on the door, death did not come. And if there was no blood, death was a certainty. The requirements have not changed for us today. God still demands a blood sacrifice to atone for sin. But the wonderful news is that God himself provided that sacrifice in his own son. The price has been paid. It is finished. 
Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb. Amen.